Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick until the end of the video, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of x squared is equal to 16. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x squared to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So x to the power of x squared to the power of 2 that's going to equal x to the power of x squared times 2, which is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this can also be written as a to the power of n times m, because m and n, these two are interchangeable, so I can switch these two places. So I'm going to rewrite x to the power of x squared times 2 as x to the power of 2 times x squared. And now, remember how I said a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the power of 2 to the power of x to the power of 2. Now 16 here, this is the same thing as 4 squared. So now I can rewrite 16 as 4 to the power of 2. Now remember, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. That's going to equal 4 to the power of 2 times 2, which is the same thing as 4 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, and this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x squared is equal to 4. So now to solve this, I'm going to be taking the square root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to the square root of 4. Now the square root of 4, this is the same thing as, or as positive or negative 2. Now, to check, I'm going to plug in positive and negative 2 into my original equation, which was x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. So let's first try out x is equal to positive 2. So x, if x is equal to positive 2, I have 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so now I have 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16, and 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So if 16 is equal to 16, this is right. Now let's try x is equal to negative 2. So if x is equal to negative 2, I have negative 2 to the power of negative 2 to the power of positive 2 is equal to 16. Now negative 2 to the power of positive 2, that's simply equal to positive 4. So negative 2 to the power of positive 4 is equal to 16. And negative 2 to the power of positive 4, that's equal to positive 16. So I have 16 equals 16, so meaning both these solutions are right. Alright, so I have x to the power of x is equal to 3 to the power of x plus 9. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times, sorry, a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have 3 to the power of x plus 9, and I can rewrite that as 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 9. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to the power of x. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x over 3 to the power of x is equal to 3 to the power of 9. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is the same thing as a over b to the power of m. So in this case, x to the power of x over 3 to the power of x, we can rewrite as x over 3 to the power of x. This is equal to 3 to the power of 9. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of one third on both sides. So now I have x over 3 to the power of x to the power of 1 over 3 is equal to 3 to the power of 9 to the power of 1 over 3. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So x over 3 to the power of x to the power of 1 over 3, that's going to equal x over 3 to the power of x times 1 over 3. And 3 to the power of 9 to the power of 1 over 3, it's going to equal 3 to the power of 9 times 1 over 3. Now x times 1 over 3 is simply x over 3. So I have x over 3 to the power of x over 3 is equal to 3 to the power of 9 times 1 over 3 is simply 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x over 3 is equal to 3. Now, if I have a simple equation, all I have to do is multiply both sides by 3. So then these two cancel out. I'm left with x is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. Now, to check, my original equation was x to the power of x is equal to 3 to the power of x plus 9. So now we know that x is equal to 9. So now I have 9 to the power of 9 is equal to 3 to the power of 9 plus 9. Now, instead of just finding the values of these, which is 9 to the power of 9, that's a really big number, all I'm going to do is simply simplify both of these expressions. So 9 to the power of 9, well, 9, this is the same thing as 3 squared. So I'm going to replace our base 9 here with 3 squared. So I have 3 squared to the power of 9 is equal to 3 to the power of 9 plus 9. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So now 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 9, that's going to equal 3 to the power of 2 times 9. This is equal to 3 to the power of 9 plus 9. Well, 2 times 9, that's equal to 18. And 9 plus 9, that's also equal to 18. So I have 3 to the power of 18 is equal to 3 to the power of 18. And because this is right, we know that our solution x equals 9 is right as well. All right, so I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 20 to the power of 8. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 2 to the power of x is equal to log 20 to the power of 8. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. So in this case, for both log 2 to the power of x and log 20 to the power of 8, I'm going to be using this property. So for log 2 to the power of x, I'm going to move the x to the front, and log 20 to the power of 8, I'm going to move the a to the front. So now I have x times log 2 is equal to 8 times log 20. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by log 2. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to 8 times log 20 over log 2. Now, if I have something in the form log AB, this is equal to log A plus log B. So in this case, 20, we could rewrite as log 10 times 2. So this would be equal to log 10 plus log 2. So now I have x is equal to 8 times log 10 plus log 2. Now I have this over log 2. Now log 10 is simply equal to 1. So now I have x is equal to 8 times 1 plus log 2 over log 2.
Now, this is the same thing as 8 times 1 over log 2 plus log 2 over log 2. And log 2 over log 2, these two simply cancel out. So I'm left with x is equal to 8 times 1 over log 2 plus 1. Now, if I distribute the 8 to both terms, I get x is equal to 8 times 1 over log 2 is 8 over log 2 plus 8 times 1 is 8. Now, log 2, this is equal to approximately 0 0.301. So I have this plus 8, and now 8 over 0 0.301. That's going to equal 26.57 plus 8. So my final answer is 34.57.